The place is Australia. But this is another time, the Aborigines dream time, the time before time. And then one day, out of the sunrise ocean, a sail. A ship in search of the great Southland. His Majesty's bark Endeavour, 20 months out of Plymouth. Her crew, 90 good men. Her captain, James Cook, navigator. The country itself, so far as we know, does not produce anything to invite Europeans to fix a settlement upon it, but it could never be doubted that most sorts of grain and fruits of every kind would flourish, were they once brought here and cultivated. That was 1770, but years passed, and Cook's New South Wales report was ignored in London. Politicians had much bigger things to worry about. War in Europe, the loss of the American colonies. Gentlemen, gentlemen, pray silence for Sir Joseph Banks. What do we do with New South Wales? What do we do with New South Wales? Cook discovered it. I can't think where. We're not really sure if it's even there. Well, what do we do with it? Oh, I don't care. What do we do with New South Wales? Give it to the American loyalists. What? Make it a naval base? Certainly not. Do some trade with China there. Don't talk rot. Oh, what do we do with New South Wales? It's a puzzle. It's a muddle. It's, it's a, a riddle. riddle. It's a joke. It's a wonder. It's a blunder. It's a picking up coke. All of us are biting our nails. Wondering what can we do with New South Wales? What a petty problem, please stop making a fuss. We've got something really important to discuss. What do we do with the convicts, eh? What do we do with the convicts, pray? Our jails are flowing over. Goodness gracious. Oh, dear. Those prison hulks on the Thames are... Disease may appear. Besides, it costs so much to keep them. Each one 20 pounds a year. What do we do with the convicts now? Build new penitentiaries. And make us all poor. Send them off to Africa. Oh, we can't anymore. Dump them in America. And start another war. Oh, what do we do with the convicts now? It's a puzzle, it's a muddle, it's, it's a riddle, riddle, it's a joke, it's, it's a wonder, wonder, it's a blunder, it's a pig in a milk. Here we sit with sweat on our brow, wondering what do we do, wondering what do we do, wondering what do we do with the convicts. Send them to New South Wales. So, it was to be a colony for convicts. Here we go, then. The first fleet. All aboard the supply ship Sirius with store ships and six transports. And what a consignment, mate. One bull, one cow, four calves, one stallion and three mares, three colts, 44 sheep, four goats, 28 pigs, a few fowls and turkeys, 759 convicts and us. A battalion of the Plymouth Division of the Royal Marines. Oh, cool. And, of course, the complement of officers, surgeons, a clergyman, and the captain. Captain Arthur Phillip and his 1,030 marines, sailors and convicts landed at Sydney Cove. It was Saturday, January the 26th, 1788. George the Third to our trusty and well beloved Captain Arthur Philip, greeting. Well, listeners, it's a hot, sticky day for the proclamation ceremony as Captain Philip receives his commission. Military affairs do by these presents 
constitute and appoint you to be governor of our territory called New South Wales. We'll uh, try to get a statement from the governor himself. Um, Your Excellency... Eh? Oh, well... Yes, here we have the finest harbour in the world, in which a thousand sail of the line may ride in the most perfect security. And, um, uh, here's an officer. Uh, excuse me, sir, would you care This to... is a country in a place so forbidding and hateful as only to merit execration and curses. Thank you. And, uh, you, sir? Oh, me! God, now me go, it's bleeding hell, ain't it? I mean, we... God help us! Look at it! Yeah, look at it! God blimey, it's no place for this here limey. Someone boo booed back in England with the facts. Who said it's like a dream, like a dream that makes you scream? Take a look at it and leave it to the blacks. Look at it, topsy-turvy. There's mosquitoes, flies and scurvy. Lots of lovely sand and scrub and friendly snakes. Instead of snow in February, we get boiling heat that's very aggravate into a bloke what gets the shakes. Look at it, weep your heart out. You'd be mad to even start out if a convict had a choice, he'd take the rope. Half a world from home and beauty way beyond the soldier's duty. Take a look at it and then abandon out. If you'd ask me, Captain Cook, sure I took a second look instead of saying, what a lovely place to find. Wrote about a paradise, land of honey, milk and spice. If you'd ask me, Captain Cook was off his mind. Then came the second fleet, and the third. Instead of desperately needed food and supplies, London sent the very dregs of Britain's jails. Down to hard rations, the governors governed, the convicts worked out their sentences, and the soldiers... worked? Making money, mate. Working a few little dodgers, you know, a little trading in rum. Oh, nothing fancy. I mean, we leave out to the officers and the gentlemen. Yeah. Do you know, they corners nearly every cargo what comes into Sydney town. Well, I mean, if it's all right for them, it's all right for us. Ain't it? To Sydney Cove to the government store. See the treasure trove of the New South Wales Corps. The New South Wales Corps Lummy. Where the currency is definitely rummy. Want to buy a sheep, boy? Want to trade your goat? Lug your flower, cheap boy. Or sell your overcoat. We won't pay you in cash, don't be funny. You get rum to yum, tum, rum to yum, tum, rum, rum, rum for your money. Keep your promissory note and your IOU. Keep your silly Spanish dollar. Ducats aren't worth a sou. Convict, just a wee bit bruised. If you want to hire a milk maid who's hardly been used, want to butter your gutter, me honey. You get rum to the yum thumb, rum to the yum thumb, rum, rum, rum for your money. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is absolute chaos. Lachlan Macquarie, one of the greatest of the early governors. Under his firm hand, a place for convicts became a place for honest men. I intend to achieve stability in this colony. We shall begin by cleansing the currency. 
Would you please take whatever steps are necessary for the setting up of a bank? The Bank of New South Wales, first bank in Australia, first public company, opened its doors April 8th, 1817. While some men grappled with the economic problems of Sydney town, other men gazed far beyond, westward to the Blue Mountains, to the unknown interior. The age of the explorers had begun. Eighteen thirteen, Blacksland, Lawson, and Wentworth. We stood at last on the crest of the range and saw a vast, fertile plain stretching unbroken to the western horizon. Hume and Hovel headed south, crossed the Murray River, reached Port Phillip. Surveyor George Evans pushed inland. We found rivers flowing westward. Westward, where? John Oxley. The interior of this vast country is an uninhabitable swamp. Perhaps an inland sea. So men searched for the inland sea. Charles Sturt. This desert is one of the gloomiest regions man ever crossed. The stillness of death reigns round us. Ludwig Leichhardt. I will find water. I must. I must go onward. Burke and Wills. We crossed the continent from Melbourne to the north, but but on the way back, everything went wrong. We were so close to help, but without water. 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 There was no inland sea. But in the southwest, Major Mitchell had found rich green country, called it Australia Felix. Happy Australia. And so they came. Westward, southward they came, moving across the face of the land like a wave across the sea. Their property rights, possession. No title, no license. They drove their sheep and cattle onto the land, built their huts and defied authority and the law. The squatters. My land blowing on the west wind. I can feel my land blowing on the west wind. Blowing on the wind to be tea. My sheep can smell my grass, smell it on the west wind. I can smell my trees, smell them on the west wind. Living in the wind. I can almost feel my soil underneath my feet Running through my outstretched hand I can see my land Out there past the west wind Out there past the wind My land Pull your boys through dust and mud Pull your boys through drought and flood Wreck those slop whips I can feel it getting closer, and when I've got there, I'll squat there to stay, and no one's gonna drive me away. Cause I can feel my land blowing on the west wind, I can feel my land blowing on the west wind. Blowing on the wind to reach me I can almost feel my soil underneath my feet Running through my outstretched hand I can see my land Out there past the west wind Out there past the wind
makes a floor and a carpet. Woman forgets about spinach and dancing. For now she belongs to the land, his land. Don't we for lost things for youth and its pleasure? Where is the bloom now? The red sun destroyed it. Suffer in silence and learn to be lonely. Live with your man and the land, his land. Out back is somewhere a woman. Wherever the squatters went, commerce followed. Into the new territories came the traders. Banks opened branches, brought money to aid the new settlers. Now there was a new feeling, a growing feeling. Confidence. Independence. Colonists far distant from Sydney wanted local rule and got it. The vast mother colony of New South Wales began to shrink as new colonies broke away. Tasmania. Victoria, Queensland, and the British government created two more colonies: Western Australia, South Australia. No convicts, so refreshing. And just when everything was going nicely, thank you, along came 1851. It's gold. Gold. What do you say? What do you say? It's gold. 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 Go down to the store and buy some mine and boots, a California hat and a blanket for two. Because we're going to the gold fields, Milton, to find a nugget that's bigger than you. Lock the house up now and throw away your job. Then sell the pigs and geese and all the cattle of loss. Because we're going to the gold fields, Percy. Find a nugget as big as a horse. Look here, Pat. They say at Ballarat, it's literally growing on trees. Look here, Joe. They say at Bendigo, it's growing in the ground right up to your knees. I hear tell at Bathurst how a certain Mr. Black found a nugget like a melon and threw it right back. Go down to the store and buy some mine and boots. A Californian hat and a blanket for two. Because they're going to the gold fields building to find a nugget that's bigger than you. Hey, yes, we're going to the gold fields, Cedric. Yeah, yeah, we're going to the gold fields, Seymour. For sure, we're going to the gold fields, Bridget. You bet we're going to the gold fields, Sheriff. Hey, yes, we're going to the gold fields, Cedric. Yeah, yeah, we're going to the gold fields, Cedric. For sure, we're going to the gold fields, Bridget. You bet we're going to the gold fields, Sheriff. Hey, yes, Goodness me, what a hullabaloo. Well, I've just come back from the gold fields, everyone, and I didn't find a brass razzle. Some found nothing. 
Some found a fortune. Gold turned the country upside down. In 10 years, the population trebled. Swarming gold fields spawned lusty boom towns. That was just the start of it. Then the new rich built magnificent mansions. The devout built stately churches. The workers built trade unions. There was a new force in the land. Mateship. And something bigger, responsible government. In 1856, good Queen Victoria gave us our first elected assembly under Governor Denison. Gold in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, Western Australia. Everything was on the up and up. Now we can send the cable all the way to London. Sail right through the new Suez Canal. Send our meat and fruit right across the world in refrigerated ships. Quick, get sheep, cattle, land. Land? But where? Where? Anywhere. Just get it. Invest. Expand. Expand. Invest, invest, expand, expand, invest, invest, expand, expand, invest, invest, expand, expand, invest, invest, expand, expand, invest. Well, that's one way to learn the economic facts of life. Huge fortunes were wiped out. Tycoon suicided. Everyone suffered. The innocent lost their life savings. Of all the banks in Australia, only nine survived, including the first bank, the Bank of New South Wales. Trade unions struggled for better conditions, but the depression got worse. The big crash of 1893. A great disaster for all Australians. For all what? Australians. Australians are Aborigines, old boy. Well, uh, where are you all from? We are New South Wales. Victoria. South. And West Australia. Queensland and Tasmania. But somehow it's a failure. On railway gauges, postage stamps, and customs duties, we go our separate way. It's chaos, but it's lovely for our ego. It's lovely for our ego. Oh, what ungrateful creatures now they've left their loving mother. That silly little things just can't agree with one another. Agree with one another. Let's have a referendum. Will the Federation go, sir? We'll ask the people what they think. One answer, yes or no, sir? One, One answer, yes or no, sir? Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! yes. yes. Each colony became a state and joined the Federation. And so was born in 1901 a bouncing baby nation. January 1st, 1901. We do hereby declare that the people shall be united in a federated Commonwealth under the name of the Commonwealth of Australia. God save the Queen. Ah, yes, 1901. A bright new century, a bright new nation, with high hopes, high ideals, where the average man would get a fair deal. Closer land settlement, tariff barriers, pensions, maternity allowances. What about the workers? Protection, immigration restriction, workers' compensation, fair and reasonable pay and conditions. Industrial peace through the arbitration court. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. William Morris Hughes. We need a citizen army. It is the first duty of every man to defend his country, and the only way to do this is universal military service. Lord Kitchener of Khartoum. The present forces are inadequate to defend Australia from the dangers of its isolated position. Agreed. Compulsory military training. We also need a navy. A navy, Mr. Deacon? But there's always the Royal Navy. Is there? Hmm. Yes. A navy. The Royal Australian Navy. Splendid. Now, what's next on the agenda? 
Hello. What was that? Some crank shot the Archduke Ferdinand. A place called Sarajevo. In the Balkans. Never heard of it. You will. It's 1914. Andrew Fisher, soon to be Australia's Prime Minister. Australia will stand behind the mother country to help and defend her to our last man and our last shilling. World War One. There are certain divisions which, if given a thing to do, would do it. The Australian divisions are in that category. So Australians earned a reputation as shock troops. Four years of that, and you were ready to head for home. Ah, oh, well, at least we helped put the world right. Now for a little peace and quiet. No, sir. Oh, 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 1919. The Peace Conference at Versailles. For Australia, Billy Hughes. No, sir. Australia will not stand by and see New Guinea handed over to another power. Any strong power controlling New Guinea controls Australia. By what right? Do I you... speak for 215,000 casualties, 60,000 dead. Who has a better right? Did I say peace and quiet? Oh, well. Forget it. <laughs> Welcome to the 1920s. Run up the Charleston flag. Dry your eyes on your handkerchief hem and blow that bugle beat rag. Don't talk to us about the war. Forget it. Forget it. Gonna be no war no more Forget it, forget it Jones may sob in sorrow Don't have us all that jazz Spend and pay back tomorrow Today let's razzmatazz Woo! Pick your old chin up off the floor You said it, you said it Go to the bank and overdraw Don't tell me that's a crime What if we're broke? Forget it And let's have a hell of a time Kiss goodbye to depression Buy me a new plush hat I got no time for depression Depression, uh, baby, what's that? Tell me I look like Clara Bow <laughs> Forget it, forget it Vodo, 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 do We haven't got a dime It's all a joke, forget it And let's have a hell of a Let's have a hell of a Let's have a hell of a time Hell of a time Yeah, they're doing their best for the diggers. Government's bought me a little property out west, stocked it with cattle and sheep. <laughs> Cause water's a bit light on, but you... Well, I mean, she'll be right. Pay them back on the never-never. Great. But where's the government getting all the money from? Oh, you two, come away from the bar and enjoy yourselves. Life's for living! The Roaring Twenties. Borrow millions, spend millions. Bring in the migrants. Build roads, railways, open up the outback. 
Bring architect Walter Burley Griffin from Chicago and build us a new national capital. Canberra, 1927. His Royal Highness, the Duke of York. Listen to the voices of the noble army of the dead and march in step with them towards a glorious destiny. Nineteen twenty-nine, and a cold wind blew from abroad, a freezing wind. Suddenly, the world went broke. Oh, strike me! Years and years of drought, and then just when the rain comes, a depression. Wool prices, wheat prices, investment from overseas. One breadwinner in three out of work. Struth. What hit us? There seems little foundation for Australia's high standard of living. You must borrow less, lay more men off. Stand in line once a week and a man gets the dull. Thanks for nothing. But Australians found things to take their minds off the dole. They opened the Sydney Harbour Bridge. World's greatest bridge. Young Don Bradman scored another century. World's greatest cricketer. Peter Dawson sang manly songs. World's greatest singer. Farlap won the Melbourne Cup. World's greatest racer. And when Farlap died, they installed his body in Melbourne Museum, his skeleton in New Zealand, and his heart in Canberra. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? Sir Charles Kingsford Smith, Smithy, pioneered airways across the world. My pals stuck to me as they've always stuck, and they did their job. The Southern Cross proved herself to be the thoroughbred that she is, and we got through. I'm mighty pleased that in all sincerity I'd tell you that my greatest joy lies in the fact in doing my job I did something worthwhile for Australia, and I hope to do further for this, my country. Ah, this country's got everything. Except money. Yes, but we've got the talkies and the gramophone and the wireless. What the bun? Einige wenige. Dieses große Volksdeutsche Reich. There he goes again. That's right, soldier. Adolf Hitler. Hitler. If you ask me, mate, he's crazy. But they never ask you, soldier, do they? Nazi Germany reoccupied the Tsar, 1935. Austria, 1938. Next in line, the world stood still. Munich, September 1938. Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. I want to say that the settlement of the Czechoslovakian problem, which has now been achieved, is, in my view, only the prelude to a larger settlement in which all Europe may find peace. Thank God. Well, uh, I don't know. Czechoslovakia! September 1st, 1939. Two days later, in Canberra, Prime Minister Menzies. Fellow Australians, it is my melancholy duty to inform you officially that in consequence of the persistence by Germany in her invasion of Poland, Great Britain has declared war upon her, and that as a result, Australia is also at war. Oh, no. Yeah, well, it's on again. Sea of fun. See all the sights through a 
your gun. For the battle, I'll bring them something to see. How I wish you were here instead of me. You'll find the nice battle stickers on our old hit bags. It's all exactly the same as before. We're off to see the world. We're off to free the world. Oh, yes, it's gonna be another wonderful June 22nd, 1941. Hitler attacks Russia. December 7th, 1941. Japan attacks Pearl Harbor. February 15th, 1942. Singapore falls. Australia's Prime Minister, John Curtin, speaks to America. It is said that the Japanese will bypass Australia and that they can be met and routed in India. I say to you that the saving of Australia is the saving of America's west coast. If you believe anything to the contrary, then you delude yourselves. You, as I have said, must be our leader. We will pull knee to knee with you for every ounce of our weight. We look to America, among other things, for counsel and advice. We are fighting all over the Middle East and they're dropping bombs on down. Come on, let's get back there before it's too late. Churchill. We could not contemplate that you would refuse our request for the diversion of the leading Australian division to save the situation in Burma. Curtin did refuse. He said we need the 7th Division here. Australia's outer defences are vanishing. Our vulnerability is completely exposed. March 1942. The Japanese army lands in New Guinea, drives over the ranges towards Port Moresby, last stepping stone to Australia. Drag a heavy cannon through the mud. Ordered up a mountain wet with blood. Here's a battle no one planned. What a place to make a stand. Kokoda. Hack the jungle wall and make a way. Dig yourself a hole. Where are you to stay? Draw a line all nice and neat. This is where there's no retreat. Kokoda. Mates of you. Say a prayer. Think of her. Never stir. Watch. And wait. Concentrate. Peel your eyes. Realize. What's in store? Never more. Here they come. Unbeaten samurai. Here they come to kill us or to die. Hand to hand along the track. Kill all four. But drive them back. Kokoda. They say the Yanks won the Coral Sea. They say the Yanks have won the Coral Sea. Now let's keep them on the run. We've got to get them on the run. Hakoda! Hakoda! 1943-44. Eisenhower led his forces into Europe. And in the Pacific, General MacArthur led American and Australian troops deep into enemy territory. Boone, Wow, Salamoa. Lay, Rabaul, the Solomons, Moratai, Borneo. This is London. The Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Winston Churchill. 
Yesterday morning, at 2.41 a.m., at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Force, and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Well, that's the end of the war in Europe, boy, but what about... Strength! What was that? A bomb. A place called Hiroshima. Then Nagasaki. And then... World War II was all over. Just like that? Yes. Just like that. By 1947, the cheering was all over, and eight million Australians took stock of themselves. We decided to be something, something bigger. Really big. Big as Ben Chifley's Snowy Mountain Scheme. Big as the Australian National University. Big as the post-war immigration program. What this country needs is money, markets, men. Right. Oh, we've got a baby boom, but we need migrants. By the million. 1949. A new federal government under Prime Minister Menzies. There was a wool boom. And a war in Korea. Well, everything grew. Population grew fast. Cities, suburbs, towns, industries grew. Great Australian organisations grew. Bank of New South Wales, BHP, Qantas, and now... Minerals. Untold millions worth. You name it, we've got it. And the world wants it. Look at Asia. We're looking. We've got to. We're next-door neighbours. All right. But how do we fit in? We're not Asians. Who is? Just what is an Asian? Oh, there are Indonesians, Chinese, Japanese, Indians, Pakistanis, but Asians? Well, what are we? Good old British heritage. Add a dash of Europe and a touch of American influence. And what have you got? Australians. <laughs> Australians. William John Farrer, Edgeworth David, McFarlane Burnett, Parks, Barton, Deakin, Monash, Isaacs, Melbourne, Sutherland, Flynn of the Inland, Hubert Murray, 
Henry Lawson, Patrick White, Nolan, Drysdale, Jobel. And a million young people we've never heard of. Yet. Look, just look at it, look at it now. Shook the rusty brakes off, here we go, we won't stop. Australia, hooray, hooray, yeah. Australia right now. It's the place to live in, it's the place you should be. Look at it, it's Australia. Great for you and me. Anything's possible now. We've just begun. What about the future? That's up to you. Yes, we can be something bigger. 